We have with us Dr. S. B. Ramanamurthy, who is the director of the Gas Turbine Research Establishment or the GTR, which is mandated to making air engines for India's military aircraft. Uh, welcome, sir, to the week. Thank you. Uh, well, sir, we'll uh, start off with the questions. The Kaveri project to make indigenous air engines was launched in 1989. What have we achieved till now? Yeah, we have built four core engines. One core engine is called HP compressor, combustion chamber, HP turbine, and nine Kaveri engines. We have built and we have uh, uh, ground runs carried out through 3400 hours of testing we have carried out, which includes altitude testing and flying test bed trials. We have completed all the component safety life related tests as per the route to certification document. And one international engine house carried out the in-depth technical audit and they concluded that the engine has attained a highly attained um, the Kaveri engine attained a high level of maturity and could be flight worthy for a limited flight envelope. So from there we are going to Kaveri derivative engine for unmanned combat air vehicle applications. I mean, uh, what have been the main challenges and how are, uh, how are we trying to overcome them? Yeah. The main challenges for the Kaveri engine and so many people, I mean, retelling delayed, fail, I mean, so the main delays are challenges. We have started in 1989, a state of art of requirements at that time, without having validated design tools, material data, lack of testing and uh, manufacturing infrastructure. Most of the um, forgings, critical forgings and uh, like turbine blade machining, we are depending upon the foreign vendors and critical line replacement units, we call as a LRUs, also depend upon the I mean, foreign uh, sources, which caused for the delays and we could able to, through design iterations, we could able to address the issues. Then we could able to go to the altitude testing in a foreign land. There we could able to come up, we call as a fan flutter, which is a aero elastic phenomena and a screech aero acoustic phenomena. If we might have been there, the test facility here, well before itself we might have come out. So some of the things we cannot predict that things. Now we could able to develop the quotes and the aero elastic and aero acoustic and we could able to validate and we could able to address and we tested no flutter or no screech. So this is one of the challenges. And what has been, as far as the recovery project is concerned, what has been the biggest spin-off till date? Yeah. Coming to the recovery spin-off, once it is dealing from the LCA, we are working on the recovery derivative engine for the unmanned combat aircraft vehicle, UCAV. So, 75. It, it starts from 2016 17 onwards, but the project got sanctioned in 2018. So, we are working from there. There, 75% uh, 75 commonality with the Kaveri engine. Being UCAV is a stealth aircraft, we have insert a technology insertions like uh, the um, UCAV will be having a serpentine air intake, the distortion level will be very high. Hence, we will be having a high distortion tolerant fan and we will be, uh, it is an autonomous vehicle, no pilot. So, we have to have a autonomous fuel control, full authority digital control system, a FEDAC. Then, it is a strategic system. So, we have to have our own LRUs. So, one of the very important fuel control system we have in design, indigenized with a redundancy. So, the and after integrating the technologies, we have tested and we have demonstrated the performance and operability of the Kaveri derivative engine with 
unrestricted carefree throttle movement which is very important in the across the uh, intended flight envelope we could able to complete almost we call as asmet accelerated simulate endurance mission testing almost we have completed then we have simulated the aircraft secondary power systems we call like amag b p2 shaft um, idg that is a integrated uh, generator and hydraulic pumps and we could able to run the uh, ucav mission cycles so we are in a very good condition as per the kaveri derivative engine for the iucav application what is the basic i mean i mean we talk about fighter aircraft engine and we talk about uh, uh, uavs so I, i mean in this particular case the ucav so what is the uh, what are the differences between the engines of uh, these two platforms yeah for example kaveri engine for lca it is a afterburner engine so when you are taking the take off and i mean um, um, maneuver and all momentarily you want high thrust so that time and supersonic speed and all that time after burner is required whereas ucav is a subsonic aircraft so after burner is not required and stealth so the infrared should not be there so we'll be going with the without after burner that is one of the main changes it is a uh, that's why we call it a derivative engine or a dry engine that is a fundamental difference then the here uh, the specific fuel consumption is very important so that to meet the mission requirements and i said uh, as i said the high distortion tolerant fan is required it should be a flutter free and uh, we should have a autonomous flight because pilot is not there then uh, it is a uh, advanced full authority digital control and being a strategic as i said so we have to have all i mean fuel control system other all line uh, replaceable units should be ours otherwise it will be the similar class say kaveri is 82 kN thrust class whereas it is 49 Kilonewton thrust class. Has the collaboration work with the international engine house already begun? As far as the aero engine is uh, is in concern, or is it still on the drawing board stage? Yeah. Um, whatever we have said now, the Kaveri dry engine is a fourth generation uh, engine. So we are uh, working for the fifth generation fighter aircraft that will be a 120 kilonewton. thrust class engine the technologies from the fifth generation is several notches above the fourth generation in terms of thrust to weight ratio turbine to temperature long life 2000 hours and all so uh, we want to collaborate with a international uh, engine house that uh, we are working out uh, in coming back to the ucav again that is being which is being developed over oh, oh, what class are we aiming at in terms of altitude endurance payload and other parameters yeah for we call as i mean the thrust class is as i said the thrust is 49 kN uh, engine at we call as a international standard atmosphere sea level static we say isa sls condition the engine at the ucav could able to go to, i mean the aircraft should be up to 10 km and 0.8 mark number whereas engine we will always design for more so it should be able to test up to 12 to 13 kilometers even up to 0.9 mark number and endurance endurance will be in the order of general i mean uh, mission one hour or continuously two hours also it should be there sir and something about uh, the road map with electric engine technologies yeah see we are i mean uh, we are developing or will be developing the more engine or all electric engine features normally the fighters there will be a gearbox which drives the fuel control pump then it will be lubricated with the lube oil so lubrication oil all the bearings will be lubricated with the lube oil so a lube pump is required so we will be replacing these things with a uh, uh, 
alternator which drives the power. So through a brushless DC motor, the pumps can be uh, run. Whereas we are looking even for a, a magnetic bearings where there is a no even lube oil is required. Uh, like this, the uh, uh, features which are all is going from the gear box. I mean, uh, we can eliminate and we can go with all electric or more electric features. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And this is uh, uh, we express uh, uh, a sense of uh, with a sense of you know, gratitude from the week. We thank you. Thank you. Always welcome. <laughs>